Spill is here to tell you all about how a capacitor can be used as a filter. Now to explore this, we're going to look at this circuit here. This one. So, consists of a voltage source, a switch we can control, turn it on and off, a drain resistor to drain voltage off of our capacitor, and a resistor just to separate our input node from our output node, as well as the capacitor. So, let's start by just turning the switch on. So it's off for a little while, and we turn it on, and it's on for a little while. Now, how does the capacitor respond? Well, the capacitor responds by, as best as it could, it, it just responds and it doesn't match the input. That's the important part. So it, it starts off steep because it's empty, but then as it accumulates charge, it slows down and eventually it just kind of levels out. So we can also turn the switch off. Now it's charged, let's turn it off. Let's drain that capacitor. So, when we drain it, the same exact thing happens, just in reverse. So, it drains quickly, and then as it empties out, it drains more slowly. And you see the same, same basic shape, just upside down. Now let's be mean to that capacitor, a poor little capacitor. Let's turn it on, and then just turn it off right away. So it's gonna, the capacitor is gonna charge up a little bit, but then before it can really get to where it needs to be, we're gonna just shut it off. And then it has to discharge. So now it's gonna discharge. So you can start to see what we would call attenuation. So let's be more mean to it. Let's turn that switch on and off faster. Now what you begin to see is that the signal just kind of starts to flatten out. So it's it's trying to make it, it's it's making an honest effort, but we're just switching that little switch on and off too quickly for it to respond. And if we get really fast, it's just going to start to look flat. If I could get my marker to work, it will just look flat. Like that. So it just kind of flattens out. And what can we glean from this uh, little thought experiment that we just had? Well, for one thing, at low frequencies, the capacitor could sort of keep up. And if we, if we made this even longer, it could definitely keep up. But as we increase the frequency of our pulses and you get over on this end, it just can't. And all you see really is a is kind of a DC signal. So it's attenuating down to DC once you get to a sufficiently high frequency. Now, just an interesting thing is if we erase this part of our circuit right here, get rid of it, and we just add, we just extend our nodes here, extend the nodes out. This is typically how you would draw a passive low-pass filter. So the, the uh, gain for a passive low-pass filter like this is just, it's flat for a little while, and then it just tanks, and it just heads south. So this, this is our gain. So at these frequencies here, this axis is frequency, this axis is gain. At these frequencies, it's just fine. It's hunky-dory. It's happy. It can keep up. But once you get here, it can't. And we start to see the gain just drop off and it attenuates. So how do we know where this point is? Well, that point is kind of sort of this frequency right here where it can just barely keep up. It just barely keeps up and then it starts attenuating. So there's a nifty equation for that. It's called FC equals 1 over 2 pi rc. So in this case, fc is our cutoff frequency. 1 over 2 pi r is our resistance, and c is our capacitance. 
And resistance is just in ohms and capacitances and farads, just like you'd be used to. So um, our cutoff frequency for this configuration is in hertz. If we wanted it in radians per second, uh, we would just take away the 2 pi, just get rid of that part. So I hope that I have helped enlighten you as to the mysticism of the capacitor as a filter. Ta-da!